season opened with a visit from the Richmond Spiders. After a scoreless first quarter, Tommy Theodos, the Richmond quarterback, did George Drake with a pass on the West Virginia one-yard line. On the very next play, Frank Pajakowski piled drives into the end zone for the first touchdown of the game as Richmond leads 6 to nothing. The Mountaineers retaliate with sophomore quarterback Mickey Kramarki connecting on a pass to end Gary Bunn that carries to the Richmond 44-yard line and the Golden Blue is on the move. Two plays later, sophomore fullback Tom Houston carries the ball down to the 23-yard line on a trap play. Sorry. Two plays later, Tomarki sneaks over for the touchdown, and the game is tied 6-6. Tommy Theodos calls on right halfback George Riggs for the scoring play. Riggs cuts wide around left end into the end zone for the second Richmond touchdown. Trailing 12-7, West Virginia quarterback Freddie Wyatt passes to end Joe Papetti for an 11-yard game. And with time running out in the first half, Wyatt takes to the air again. He connects on a long strike to halfback Bobby Marks, and the play covers 56 yards for a Mountaineer touchdown. With West Virginia leading 14-12 early in the third period, Buddy Davis fumbles and the Mountaineers recover. On an option play, Tomarki pitches out to halfback Jack Rabbit, who swings around right end and down the sideline 45 yards to the Richmond 27-yard line. Rabbit takes the pitch again. This time, he goes 17 yards to the Richmond 10. Fullback Tom Houston gets the call. Houston crashes up the middle and into the end zone for the touchdown as the Mountaineers increase their lead 21-12. to Beautiful faking by Mickey Kramarki is followed by a completed pass to Tony Hozek moving the ball all the way down to the Richmond seven-yard line. This time, Tamaki finds Gary Bunn alone in the end zone for another West Virginia touchdown. With Freddie Wyatt at quarterback now, he fakes to his fullback, rolls out to his left and hits Moss with a pass at midfield. Wyatt hands off to Moss this time, and the speedy halfback carries for 15 yards. On this play, it's Joe Marconi's turn. Wyatt drops back to pass, and Marconi spears it on the 15, and goes the rest of the way for a touchdown and a Mountaineer victory over Richmond, 33-12. The second obstacle for the Mountaineers is Wake Forest. Here's the kickoff, and the ball is taken in by Mountaineer quarterback Freddie Wyatt. Wyatt brings the crowd to its feet with an electrifying 60-yard kickoff return. But it wasn't until four and a half minutes later, after the ball had changed hands, when Bobby Moss cut off the right side and ran 45 yards for the first of many West Virginia touchdowns. As Wake Forest moves on the offense, quarterback Nick Consolas finds West Virginia's All-America tackles Bruce Bosley and Sam Huff too much to cope with. Consolas is forced back into his own end zone, and Bosley slams him to the ground. Huff bounces on the resulting fumble for the second touchdown just 58 seconds after the first. In the second period, Wyatt makes the Wake Forest defense out of position. He finds Bobby Moss in the clear, and Moss moves the ball to within inches of scoring with a key block from Joe Kopniski. On this play, Moss carries it over for the third score of the afternoon. And then Sam Huff adds a perfect conversion as West Virginia leads 19 to nothing. 
With the second platoon picking up the attack, the Markey takes to the air and Gary Bunn gathers the ball in for 15 yards. West Virginia strikes through the air again. And the Tomarki to Hosek pass is good for another score. After Wake Forest punt, West Virginia's air arm opens up with all its fury. Wyatt passes to Moss, and Bobby pulls the ball in for another Mountaineer game. This time it's a screen pass with Krutko the target as the Mountaineers move brilliantly downfield. A third pass puts the ball into scoring position. Wyatt hits Kopinski as the ball goes down to the two-yard line. Red Wyatt caps the drive with a quarterback sneak for the touchdown. Leading 32 to nothing at halftime, the Mountaineers continue their relentless attack in the third quarter. Tomarki pitches to Paul Shepard who sweeps around left end and down the sidelines for 35 yards. Now in one of the most sensational plays of the season, Jack Rabbit takes the pitch out. He bobbles the ball, Rod Hundley fashion. He's finally pulled down from behind on the five-yard line. It's Shepard's turn now. He responds beautifully on the option play with another Mountaineer six-pointer. Even the third platoon can't be stopped. Alex Zuch directs the attack and continues through the air. Roger Chansey hauls in Zuch's aerial for a 30-yard gain. Zuch passes again. This time to back Eddie Dugan, who moves to the five-yard line, where he is stopped by the Deacon secondary. And then Zuch on the keeper drives into the end zone as the Mountaineers win 46 to nothing. A capacity crowd turns out at Bluefield's Mitchell Stadium to watch the Mountaineers tangle with Virginia Military Institute. The teams are scoreless late in the first period when the key depth's Charlie Lavery punts to Vic Rabbits on the West Virginia four-yard line. Rabbits fumbles the ball back to the one. Finally, he picks it up, runs out to the right, and then with perfect blocking, takes off 99 yards for the Mountaineers' first touchdown of the afternoon. By that 6 nothing margin at the beginning of the second quarter, the Golden Blue recovers the BMI fumble on the key depth 48-yard line. Then a perfectly executed draw play sends Sonny Krutko up the middle to the 30-yard line in BMI territory. Bobby Moss takes the pitch out and fights his way down the sideline to the key depth 7-yard line. Moss getting the call again. This time on a dive play, he goes to the two-yard line. And finally, the hard-running halfback from Huntington takes another handoff and plows into the end zone for the touchdown. Following the kickoff, the key Dets move on the offense again. But the hard-hitting Mountaineer line racks up the runner and recovers another fumble. The second platoon takes over with quarterback Mickey Kermarkey completing a pass to Paul Shepard at the BMI seven yard line. Houston cuts off tackle to the BMI three yard strike. And then Rabbits crashes into the end zone for the West Virginia touchdown. There is no let up for the embattled cadets. Early in the third quarter, Wyatt passes to Joe Kopniski. Kopniski pulls his way to the 24 yard line. see Freddie Wyatt passing again. This time, his aerial is complete to Ralph Anastasio, who ran down to the 10-yard line before fumbling, with Stubby Grutko recovering for the West Virginia Mountaineers on the 13th. From that point, Grutko finds a hole in the left side and moves the ball onto the VMI 5. And after four and a half minutes of the third quarter, Krutko goes through for another Mountaineer touchdown. 
the two deaths come to life behind quarterback Billy Nebraska, who passes to Elmore for a 15-yard gain into West Virginia territory. On this play, Rollwine carries off his own right tackle and cuts back for a 12-yard gain. And then a VMI scores play, a neat fake by Nebraska. A pitch out to Moody carries the ball wide around right end for the first VMI touchdown of the afternoon. The score stands West Virginia 26, VMI 6. With time running out in the third period, Kamarki passes to Tony Hozak for a gain of 23 yards. He carries the ball to the VMI 39-yard line. This drive is capped off by a perfect pass to Gary Bunn, who outruns the entire VMI secondary for the touchdown. In the fourth quarter, with a mixture of second and third platoon players in the game, the Mountaineers move back into VMI territory with quarterback Alex Zuch connecting with Bunn on the squadron nine-yard line. And then Zuch finds end Joe Papetti, wide open in the end zone. He hits him with a perfect strike, and the Mountaineers lead 40-6. Late in the fourth quarter, Fred White is throwing again for West Virginia. He connects with Papetti for 15 yards. Fearless Fred hides the ball well, fading out to the right, and then connects with Anastasio for a 20-yard Mountaineer game. On the scoring play, Wyatt heaves a long one to Papetti in the end zone for a touchdown. West Virginia leads BMI 47-6. With time running out of the game, a pass interception gives BMI the ball on the Golden Blue 28-yard line. At this point, Shepard of BMI tracks through the line, moving the ball down to the West Virginia 17. And from there, Ross pitches out to Vaughn. He sweeps around end for a touchdown. As the game ends, the final score. West Virginia 47, Virginia Military 12. It's homecoming day on the university campus as Southern Conference foe William & Mary lines up to receive the kickoff from the West Virginia Mountaineers. There's the kick, and halfback Jack Yo returns for the Indians. On the first scrimmage play, Yo carries and fumbles with the Mountaineers' recovery. Quick to capitalize on this early advantage, Moss carries for seven yards into William & Mary territory. And then on a right play, Moss takes off around the right side, 25 yards for the West Virginia touchdown. Sam Huff kicks off again for West Virginia, and once again the ball is taken in by Jack Yo. On this trip, he returns to the William and Mary 27. On the first scrimmage play, the Indian quarterback is hit hard by Bruce Mosley. He fumbles with Joe Capetti recovering on the William & Mary 15-yard line. Wyatt completes a short pass to Joe Marconi down to the seventh. And then Marconi dives into the end zone for the touchdown, and West Virginia leads 13-0. Soon after the next kickoff, Greco is hit and fumbles with West Virginia recovering again. Kamarki carries on a keeper, and the play is good for 10 big yards. Then Mickey Kamarki hands off to Dick Rabbit, who fights his way to the 12-yard line. A pitch out to Houston puts the ball on the six. Kramarki pitches out to Rabbit, who sweeps around right end for a score, and the Mountaineers lead 20 to nothing at the end of the quarter. The Mountaineer offense starts rolling again in the second period as Wyatt passes to Moss 
at midfield. Bobby gets the call again. This time he responds with a spectacular 35-yard run to the William & Perry 15-yard line. Then a Wyatt to Kopniski pass penetrates the Indian secondary for another touchdown and West Virginia leads 26 to nothing. William & Perry's offense is choked off again. Mickey Kamarki intercepts the pass to set up another Mountaineer drive. A pass play to Tony Hozek is good for 25 yards before he's knocked out of bounds. Another aerial moves the ball to the William & Mary 27-yard line. The Mountaineer running attack grinds out eight more yards to the 19-yard strike. Now here's a sensational catch by Gary Bunn that gives West Virginia another touchdown and a halftime lead of 32 to nothing. William and Barry comes back strong in the third quarter driving to the Mountaineer four-yard line, only to lose the ball again on a fumble. But then seconds later, West Virginia punts. Greco takes in the Mountaineer kick at the 50-yard line and shoots down the sideline for the Indians' first touchdown. In the fourth quarter, the Big Green is still troubled with fumbleitis as Self loses the ball and the Mountaineers are headed goalward again. Moss cracks over the right side and cuts back for 15 yards. Ralph Anastasio takes the ball this time. He picks up 10 yards. And the pass to Stubby Crusco sets up the final West Virginia scoring play. Crusco drives over from the two for the touchdown. With time running out, a Mountaineer fumble is recovered by the Indians on the Golden Blue 13. And Greco passes for the touchdown with just seven seconds remaining. And the final score is West Virginia 39, William and Mary 13. Before a record crowd in Mountaineer Field, West Virginia meets the Penn State Disney Lions. State gets off to a quick start, moving the ball to the five-yard line, where fullback Bill Straub carries to the three. Fleet-footed Lenny Moore goes this time, getting down to the one-yard line. And quarterback Bobby Hoffman sneaks over for the first Penn State score. The placement is good by Milt Plum, and State is off to a 7-0. The Mountaineer offense is stymied until the third quarter. Penn State is forced to punt out of bounds on the West Virginia seven-yard line. It was here the Golden Blues started rolling. Bobby Moss cuts over the right side for 18 yards. Then it's Joe Marconi. Big Joe carries into the other side of the line, good for 8 yards. passing arm of Fred Wyatt takes over. He throws to Bobby Moss for a 25-yard gain out to the West Virginia 47-yard line. Wyatt hands to Marconi again, and the bruising halfback slams into the line and into the clear to run 31 yards down to the state 22-yard strike. Ready 
Wyatt calls on Bobby Moss again. Moss drives through the right side for 12 yards to the Penn State 10. Moss is the big man again as he takes the pitch out and cuts wide around the right side, outrunning three state defenders for the score. Sam Huff's placement ties the game at 7 all. In the fourth quarter, Moss again runs brilliantly, slicing through the right side for a 25-yard gain before he stops on the Penn State 10-yard line. Marconi this time slams over the right side, picking up six more yards going to the four-yard line. Then Fred Wyatt calls on Bobby Moss. He takes the handoff and takes down to the one-yard line. It's Marconi's turn now. He dives into the line and into the end zone as the Mountaineers go ahead of 10 State. Plenty more carries for State, but it's hit by Bruce Mosley. He fumbles, and Joe Kotniski recovers the big skin for West Virginia. Leading 14 to 7 with time running out, Stubby Krutko hits the middle for 8 yards. On the dive play, Marconi carries to the Nippy Lions 17. Then Fred Wyatt keeps the ball for the first down on the 15. carries again. He goes straight ahead to the 10-yard line. Then Bobby Moss carries off the opposite side on the right play for the touchdown, and Huff's third straight conversion is good as the Mountaineers win 21-7. As the Mountaineers win 21-7. Now for the first time since 1933, West Virginia and Marquette meet on the gridiron. The Warriors kick off, and Bobby Moss has trouble finding the handle. He finally picks up the ball and returns it to the 17-yard line. On the first play from scrimmage, Joe Marconi refuses to be hauled down. He runs to the 46-yard line for a 29-yard gain. pitches to Bob Moss, who behind beautiful blocking moves for 25 yards. Then Wyatt makes the pass and hands to Krutko on the draw play for 10 yards down to the Marquette 24-yard line. Still moving brilliantly, Wyatt pitches to Marconi. Big Joe drives to the Marquette 13-yard line. On this play, Wyatt fakes the pitch out and keeps. He runs all the way to the goal line for the Mountaineers' first touchdown. Marquette on the first series from scrimmage is forced to punt. Ralph Anastasio takes it on the six-yard line. He returns to the Mountaineer 16. On the right play, Wyatt hands to Moss, who hits the right side, breaks into the clear, and goes all the way. A beautiful 84-yard run for a West Virginia touchdown. The Mountaineers lead Marquette 14 to nothing. Marquette is forced to punt again. And again, Ralph Anastasio is on the receiving end of the kick. He pulls it in and returns 23 yards to the Warriors' 43-yard line before slipping and falling on the wet turf. This is Paul Shepard carrying for the Mountaineers. 
He dives through the right side for an eight-yard gain. The second platoon continues to roll as Jack Rabbits moves for the first down on the Marquette 27-yard line. Now Tremarkey pitches to Paul Shepard. There's a flag. He goes all the way for the score, but it's no good. West Virginia was ruled in motion as the ball is returned. After a five-yard penalty on the next play, Tremarkey tries the other side of the line, pitching to Jack Robbins. Rabbit sweeps around right end, Gets a beautiful block by Gary Bunn on the five-yard line, and this time the touchdown is good. In the same period, Marquette's offense is again stopped by the Mountaineer forward ball, and Marconi carries for 10 to the 31. From that point, Wyatt fades to pass. He finds the penny in the clear. Joe pulls the ball in and races all the way for another West Virginia touchdown. The Mountaineers lead 26 to nothing. West Virginia's offense continues to roll. Wyatt jumps and hits Joe Kotniski for 10 yards. On the 49, Fred fakes and cuts over the right side on a keeper play, runs beautifully through the secondary, and goes 51 yards for the touchdown. As Marquette begins to move offensively, Weber fades to pass, but West Virginia's Tom Doman is on the receiving end. He starts down the sidelines, and Bruce Bosley clears the way. He gets two men out of midfield, and Doman goes on to the 30-yard line for a 50-yard return. In the fourth quarter, Kamarki pitches to Eddie Dugan, who cuts back to the left, then toward the sidelines and races 35 yards before he is hauled down on the 41. This is the play on which Dugan suffered a shoulder separation and was lost to the Mountaineers for the remainder of the season. Two plays later with Marquette in possession, Weber drops back to pass, but Big Rabbit picks it out of the air and returns 20 yards before being driven out of bounds on the Marquette 30-yard line. With Alex Such directing signals, he fades the pass, finds Roger Chansey in the clear, and hits him on the 10. Chansey goes over for the touchdown, and the final score, West Virginia 39, Marquette nothing. It's Griffith Stadium in Washington, D.C. A cold night, a record crowd for college football. This game will determine the Southern Conference Championship. In the first quarter, George Washington in possession. Mike Summer takes the ball, drives over the right side, cuts back to his left, and moves into the clear all the way 89 yards for the touchdown. And the Colonials are off to a quick 7-0 lead. It isn't until the third quarter that West Virginia begins to move. Wyatt hands to Moss for 20 yards, moving the ball out to midfield. Then Moss drives over the right side of the line, Cuts back to his left and into the clear to go all the remainder of the distance for the six points. Sam Huff's try for the extra point is good, and the ball game is tied at 7-7. Late in the fourth quarter, Wyatt's jump pass to Joe Kotniski is good for 10 yards. hands to Krutko, who goes through the middle of the line for 12 yards to a first down on the two-yard strike. Two plays later, Krutko pile drives over to cap a 98-yard touchdown drive and give the Mountaineers a 13-7 win and their 16th straight Southern Conference victory and their third straight league championship. Right? Sixth in the nation and riding on the crest of an 11-game win streak, West Virginia invades Pitt Stadium before nearly 60,000 fans. In the first quarter, Pitt has the ball, fourth and one at midfield, and quarterback Pete Neff sneaks for five yards for the first down. 
Dick Bowen cuts through the left side, finds daylight, and moves down to the West Virginia nine-yard line before being forced out of bounds. After one running play, Neff passes to Joe Walton in the end zone for a touchdown, and Pitt leads West Virginia 7-0. The half ended that way, and the Panthers opened the third period, kicking off to the Mountaineers. But on the first running play from Scribbage, the Golden Blue fumble and Pitt is in business again on West Virginia's 25-yard line. Neff hands to Lou Cimaroli, who cuts off his own left tackle and goes to the Mountaineer 18. Cimaroli carries again for the Panthers, this time through the right side and down to the eight. On the very next play, Neff keeps the ball himself and goes right through the middle of the line to put Pitt in a comfortable 13-0 lead. West Virginia on the offense again. The Markey moves to his left, but then John Palick crashes in and hits him so hard he fumbles. Joe Walton covers for Pitt on the 25. Quarterback Corny Salvatera fakes the pitch and keeps on the option play to run all the way to the one-yard line before being knocked out of bounds. Fullback Tom Jenkins scores for Pitt, driving over the center of the line. Pitt with the ball again. Quarterback Darrell Lewis drops back the pass, but can't find a receiver open, decides to run with it. It's good for a 15-yard game. Jenkins drives straight up the middle for five yards. Nick Pasadella from a delayed buck goes up the middle now to the eight-yard line. And on this play, quarterback Darrell Lewis keeps, drives the middle again, and moves into the end zone to put Pitt ahead 26 to nothing. With less than two minutes remaining, the Pitt fans begin to tear the goalpost down. The Rocky fades the pass, and it's incomplete to Jack Rabbit. But pass interference is called against Pitt. On the next play, Marconi sweeps around left end to put the Mountaineers down on the Pitt 21-yard line. Now with only 20 seconds remaining in the ball game, the Markey tries a desperation pass to Jack Rabbit. And another pass interference play is called against Pitt as time runs out. The game appears to be over, but actually, it isn't over yet. The Pitt fans storm out on the field. Finally, police and guards clear away the fans for just one more play. West Virginia avoids a shutout as Marconi drives over the left side for the score. Pitt competes the extra point with the goalpost down and wins 26 to 7. With Freddie Wyatt injured in the pit game, Mickey Tremarkey is the starting quarterback against Syracuse. In a driving snowstorm, he hands to Bobby Moss, who rides over the right side, bursts into the clear, 65 yards down to the Syracuse five-yard line. He pitches out to Marconi at the beginning of the second quarter. He goes around left end for the score, and the Mountaineers lead 6 to nothing. With the snow still coming down, Kamarki's pitch goes wild, and Don Althaus recovers for the orange. Quarterback Eddie Albright passes to Dick Lassie, who moves the ball down to West Virginia's 20-yard line. Bill Micho slices through the left side to carry the ball to the Golden Blue 15. Halfback Jimmy Brown takes the ball around right end and pulls his way to the Mountaineer one-yard line. Albright dives over to tie the score 6-6 before 25,000 fans celebrating Mountaineer weekend. In the final period, with the score tied 13-13, Don Laxman hits the middle for a first down on the Mountaineer 22. Albright fakes to his fullback and hands to Jim Brown, who smashes over the right side and down to the 12. After moving on the ground, Albright passes to Althaus in the end zone for the touchdown that gives Syracuse a 20-13 verdict and hands West Virginia its second straight defeat.
Virginia in the final game of the season at North Carolina State in a driving rainstorm at Raleigh, North Carolina. In the first quarter, state quarterback Ed West and the back Dick Hunter, who hits the line and fumbles and West Virginia recovers. Bobby Moss on the first play, cuts through the right side for eight yards. The Markey gives to his fullback, Larry Krutko, who picks up 10 more yards for West Virginia. Continuing on the move, Moss drives over the right side and on down to the nine yard line for the Mountaineers. Tabarki hands to Krutko, who smashes over the center of the line and down to the two-yard strike. Then Tabarki sneaks over for the first score, and West Virginia leads 7 to nothing. With the Wolf back in possession, Mike Miller takes the pitch out and goes around left end for 25 yards to the West Virginia 35. Eddie West rolls out to his right and goes all the way down to the 25-yard line for a first down deep in Mountaineer territory. This time, West keeps for five more yards against the Golden Blue. Then West rolls out to the right and moves down to the six-yard line as the rain continues to pour down. West rolls out to the left this time. He picks up his blockers around left end and goes into the end zone to tie the score 7-7 as the half ends. It's still raining as Moss takes the second half kickoff and returns to the West Virginia 30-yard line. Frisco has the handoff. He drives through the middle for 20 yards, coming all the way out to midfield. Then Marconi, on a straight handoff, goes for eight yards into North Carolina State territory. Markey hands to Moss, who goes through the inside of the state defense and finds an opening to go all the way for a touchdown to put West Virginia ahead. With the Wolf back on the offense, Hunter fumbles and West Virginia recovers in state territory at the end of the third quarter. the ball in play at the 15-yard line. Marconi takes the handoff and cuts off his own left tackle and runs into scoring territory as West Virginia leads 20-7. With time running out in the final game of the season, George Marinkoff fumbles the handoff and West Virginia is on the offense again. The holding penalty puts the Mountaineers at midfield and Joe Marconi slices through the left side and goes all the way for the touchdown. adds the placement, and the Mountaineers win 27-7 in the final game of the season, and West Virginia finishes with a successful 8-2 record.